Thanks for watching this presentation online. My name is Javier Torrente, and I'm the e-learning group director by Baltasar Fernand Marcon at the Complutense University of Madrid. In this occasion, it is my pleasure to present to all of you some of the work we are doing regarding the deployment of serious games into the classroom and their evaluation. First of all, let me briefly summarize experiments we carried out recently through some numbers. I don't know if any of you will dare to guess what these five numbers are, but I can give you a clue. They summarize different experiments we've carried out in the last year regarding serious games. Okay, don't worry, I'll go directly to the solution. Just in the last year, we've stored 1.5 gigabytes of data from a student interaction with serious games through tracking uh, systems. In total, 651 students from 13 different educational institutions, different levels, schools, colleges, etc., participated in a total of four different experiments, where also four different serious games were tested. Let me explain something that I think is pretty important for, to understand this presentation which is that only in one case we tested these games with our own students. That means that in three of these cases we were only the researchers, that is, external entities that went to a different educational institution to work with teachers there. This is important because the level of control you have in these situations is completely different. Let me briefly describe these four games we used. Three were e-adventure games, which were the Big Party, uh, Maboba and Donations. And another one was a puzzle action-based game called Lost in Space. Well, e-adventure games, the three e-adventure games have similarities, like the interaction, the type of game use, etc. Lost in Space is a very, very different game. So, um, to get a better understanding of how, what these games look like, let me show you two quick videos. Selecciona tu género. Hoy es el gran día. Tienes que prepararte para acudir a la fiesta anual de la empresa. Empieza por tu higiene personal y por elegir una vestimenta adecuada. Estas son las tareas que debes realizar antes de salir del baño. Lavarte los dientes, ducharte, afeitarte. Y después de ducharte, no antes, realiza las siguientes tareas. Echarte desodorante, peinarte, echarte colonia. Well, this video corresponds to the game The Big Party. This game, the goal of this game was to teach students with cognitive disabilities some of the basic daily tasks that everyone takes in their lives. For example, taking care of one's personal hygiene or uh, uh, taking public transportation to get to work or how to collaborate with uh, the students.
This was a simple excerpt of the game Lost in Space, which served a completely different purpose. It was designed to teach computer science students basics, basic XML concepts. So, in all these four experiments, everything was done in-house. From the experiment design, to the game design and development, and also the study, all the activities related to the study support. That means the organization of the groups, the logistics, going to the institutions to install the games, and the testing, etc. So what I'm going to do now is to very briefly get you some insight on the lessons we learned on each of these separate circles. Regarding experimental design, we follow quite a common approach. We take students and divide them into two groups. One is the experimental group, that tends campus learning instruction, and the second is the control group, which is basically uh, basically attends regular instruction, which tends to be um, a lecture given by the regular teacher. We define the variable outcomes we want to measure, which are usually, um, for example, learning that students have the, the knowledge that students have regarding a particular topic, or their motivation towards a specific, a specific subject. We create instruments to measure changes in these variables, which are usually pre and post tests that take around 10 to 15 minutes to complete, depending on the case, and that are administered before and after the intervention. And then we measure these variables and we compare across groups. But we introduce two novelties which I think are very important. The first one is that, whenever possible, we also try to introduce a third group for comparison, which is the best instructional approach we can find for that particular purpose. It can be, for example, a practical demonstration by experts in the field or uh, by any other means that we, we, found, we find is the, the, the best known instructional for this particular subject. And this is very interesting because it lets you, it gives you more information to really evaluate the effectiveness of your game. You must think that serious games are expensive content to produce. So we should try to analyze not only the effectiveness of the game compared regular instruction, but also what is the cost effectiveness rating. And you only can get this by comparing to a kind of top line approach. The second novelty is that as an instrument we also use learning analytics. And that's interesting because it basically lets us watch monitor what is going on during the gameplay and as a consequence we get an insight on how why students are learning instead of the pre or having only the pre and post tests that only give you information about the outcomes that mean that means how much the students learn Regarding the game design, well, there are a lot of different considerations to take. We will only highlight two which we think are very, very important. First one is try to get to know your population as well as you can. Because especially in primary and secondary education, any subtle differences in the demographics you have across, across your groups can have a direct impact on your results. For example, in our experience, girls and boys have a completely different perspective towards video games and learning. 
So, if in your population there's a significant difference in the proportion of boys and girls, you should take different actions regarding game design and experimental design to better suit your research for that population. And second, if you want to use learning analytics in your experiments, you must have this consideration in mind while you are designing the game. So ideally, you interlace activities and puzzles within the game that are oriented to evaluate the skills and concepts that the students is supposed to be acquiring through the gameplay. If you fail to do this, then you will collect a lot of data, but they will be useful for now. And finally, some practical issues regarding the experiment support. These aspects are less important from a scientific perspective than the others I presented, but for the validity, to ensure the validity of the results you get, they are so, so, so important. The first idea is that control is key. If you want to have the less bias possible, you must ensure you control all the experience, from the equipment to the materials to the settings, absolutely everything is under control. That is especially challenging if you are not using your own students for evaluation, your students using everyone's uh, other persons, other teachers, students, because it's the teacher who has the control, not the research. So try to explain to the teacher involved all the problems and all the needs you have so they can accommodate them the best you can, the best they can. Second, think that everyone is evil until he proves the opposite to what concerns the purpose of your research. Don't take me wrong, you are very thankful to all the students and teachers that have participated in our experiments. But, since neither students or teachers have the same goals regarding these experiments you have, they might intentionally or unintentionally influence the results you get, especially the teachers. Let me give you an example. We were conducting an experiment trying to raise the interest that the students, youngsters, have in classic theatre around Spain. So we went to schools primary and secondary schools to evaluate a game we developed for that purpose. One of the things we wanted to, to measure was if the game was able to produce any learning regarding orthography for the students. So for that purpose we produced an instrument that measured uh, changes that value. And what we noticed is, is that some teachers had the feeling that by doing so, being, doing so, their ability as teachers were also being examined. So, knowingly or unknowingly, we don't know, they cheated while the students were completing the questionnaires in order to artificially increase their scores. Obviously, we were not very happy when we discovered that by analyzing the data. Other aspect that is very important is that you must check absolutely everything before you go to the educational institution. Everything is important, everything, and anything can go wrong while you are there, and you will have very short time to fix any problems. Think of fact of each each experiment as a one-shot opportunity. You must not fail. 
Another very useful recommendation is try to use simplest technology you can find because you have no idea of what equipments or settings you will have in educational institutions which are very variable. In some places you can have better computers, in others you can have 20 year old computers. In some institutions you can have Windows based operating systems, in others you may have Linux. In one you will be able to install things, in others all the installation will be restricted to administrators. So try to use simple technology that is portable and that you are sure it will work on most of the settings you can initially foresee. So that's all. Thanks for your attention and if you have any questions I will be very happy to answer them via email at Javier Torrente J, it's jtorrente at fdi.ucm.es